If you drive a 4x4, then you've got one. Today, Ian and Jesse are talking transfer cases, what to buy and how to make them better, plus nature against man and beast as we try to tackle Mayhem Hill. That's all right now on Extreme 4x4. Extreme 4x4, and as I'm sure some of you guys remember, not too long ago, we brought in a bunch of axles from the local junkyard to talk about all the models and the benefits of each one. Now we got a lot of really good feedback from you guys wanting to know more of that kind of information about transfer cases. Today's your lucky day. We scoured the local junkyards and brought in all the popular OEM transfer cases to talk about each model. Plus we'll go over some popular upgrades for them, including a couple doublers. Now the simplest way to refer to a transfer case would be to call it a power splitter. It accepts power from the output shaft of the transmission and delivers it to both the rear and the front axle. And usually a high range of 1 to 1 and a low range of somewhere around 2 to 1 in stock form. Now one of the oldest transfer cases we have in the shop today is the new Process 205. Ford, Chevy and Dodge used this case since around 1971. Now the Chevrolet versions were passenger side drop transfer cases, which means that the output shaft was on the passenger side of the truck. They had two different mounting flanges, either the circular six bolt or a race track eight that was in the shape of a figure eight. The Chevrolets had three different input shafts, a 10 spline, a 27 spline and a 32. The 10s were behind the standard shift transmissions, the 27s, the turbo 350s, and the 32s were mated up to the turbo 400s. Now this is a Ford NP205. It is a driver's side drop case, which means obviously the output shaft is on the driver's side. Now the nice thing about the Ford setup is that both the output shaft front and rear came as 32 spline units straight from the factory. The GM ones were only 30 splines. Now the larger spline count means that the output shafts are stronger, making the Ford case one of the most popular cases to use in a 203-205 doubler. Now the low range in this case is 1.96 to 1 and the overall length just under 14 inches. Now the 205 was also available as a divorced unit, and a divorced unit is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. The transmission and the transfer case were separated from each other and connected by a short drive shaft. Now the divorced unit has all the same specs as the direct mount unit. The OEMs thought that it, they could go ahead and use the two-wheel drive transmission and just go ahead and mount this unit farther back in the chassis on its own cross member. Now the benefits of the 205 are the long list of the input spline counts and having the both driver side and passenger side drop. The strength of the 205 is legendary because of the gear size and the cast iron housing. It can be twin stick for an independent engagement of both front and rear axles. Now the drawback, there's only one. It weighs about 140 pounds. Now the new product for all the Chevrolet 205s is this low max 3 to 1 kit from JB Conversions. It replaces the stock case with this nodular iron kit and has more internal ribbing altogether making it a stronger unit. Plus, it's drilled for multiple clocking positions. Now the gear tooth width is a lot larger, also making the gears a lot stronger. And both input and the output shafts have been upgraded to 32 spline. This is the kind of jewelry I need to make me happy. <laughs> now the next transfer case we're going to look at is the new Process 203 unit. Now just like the 205, it came in both Ford, Chevy and Dodges and that's why it has many different input gear spline counts. Everything from a 10, a 23, a 27, a 31 and a 32 depending on what transmission it was behind. Now this has the same low range ratio as the 205, 1.96 to 1, but how it delivers the power to the front output is a little bit different. Instead of using all gears, it has a gear, gear reduction housing in the front and then a chain drive portion in the back. Now this chain drive portion is what makes most people stray away from this case because chains have a tendency to stretch and or worse break, gears don't do that. Now the 203 is sought after by off-roaders, but certainly not because it's a very good transfer case. All we're after really is this front range box housing itself. 
we can use this range box housing to create what's called the 203-205 doubler kit. Now the originator of the doubler is off-road designs. Now use this billet aluminum 6061T6 adapter plate where you bolt the range box on the front and then a little short output shaft inside the transfer case and the 205 will bolt onto the back. Now this gives you multiple gearing options. In stock form, it gives you a one to one high, a two to one medium low, and it'll also give you a four to one ultimate low. It's pretty much the most versatile and strongest case you can make by pulling transfer cases out of a junkyard. And to show you how easy it is, we're gonna build one right now. The first step to building the doubler will be to disassemble the range box from the 203 case. With the range box clean, the ORD doubler plate is bolted up and the new fill plate installed over the factory PPO cover. To make this the ultimate doubler, the 205 is completely disassembled and the low max 3 to 1 kit put together. Using the larger JB conversion gear sets as well as the 32 spline input and output shafts will make this case super strong. Now using the Lomax 205 kit in this doubler gives us a bunch of different forward ranges. We have a one to one high range, we can put the range box in low and leave the rear 205 in high, it's going to give us a two to one. We can put the range box back in high, leave this in low and then we'll have a three to one or we can package them all together and get a six to one, making this the ultimate doubler using stock transfer cases. Now we're not just stopping at the 205, we still got to talk about the MP231-241, the Dana 300, the Dana 20, all their upgrades, plus we got some aftermarket cases for you too. After the break, the only throttle position on these rigs is wide open. Rock racing at Mayhem Hill, when Extreme 4x4 continues. Extreme 4x4, where we have the privilege of building some of the sickest rigs and traveling the country's most awesome trails. This week, we didn't have to go far, just about an hour and a half up the road to find out who would be crowned King of Mayhem Hill. Compared to the rest of the country, life in the South moves a little bit slower. Welcome to Master of Mayhem, Paul of Tennessee. Hosting their first ever rock race, the Mayhem Off-Road Park blew that sleepy image to bits. Hit it hard, far as the pedal go. To get to the finish line with the fastest time, both the small and big tire classes had to hit it hard. It's gonna take some horsepower, horsepower and someone that's not scared. Jason Randolph wasn't scared. Oh, screwed up, that's not the first time. The organizers let me take our poison spider build out for a run. The goal is just to get to the top. Built to conquer level 5 rated trails, this course beat us down. Oh, it's just a U joint. Who's got a spare? You can see I left some paint on it here and I, I tried to wear some of it down. While I disappointed the fans, Paige Phillips did not. I'm kind of crazy. In the small tire class, Paige is one of the toughest. She's not afraid to take it up anything. My philosophy is use a skinny pedal. While her driving turns heads, her age drops jaws. When I go around, people are like, is that a 13-year-old girl? And I'm like, yeah. Most 13-year-olds are still riding their bicycles. Paige is slamming stones in her bright yellow Suzuki. My dad, I drove his for about a year and he got tired of me tearing it up, he said, so he built me one. I've had it for about a year. It's got 589 gears and a six to one ratio. Uh, it's got 37 and a half inch tires, I rocks and big locks, and it's propane injected. It's like a roller coaster ride. It's just awesome. To be competitive against drivers twice her age takes a solid rig and sound advice. My dad's taught me just to watch my spotter and just listen to everything he says. He's always there for me. At the Masters of Mayhem, Dad was out front spotting. Put your wheels to the left. Keep winking. My dad's job is just to get me through the trail.
making good time, her first run came to an abrupt end. Yoke busted? Yeah, got the yoke. Snapped it right off. I hit a rock and I bounced up and I landed back on my rear tires and I broke a rear yoke. I broke both the ears off of it. Her driving style means they come prepared. So I've got a spare drive shaft and they're taking it out and they're gonna put another one back in it. And I'm gonna try it one more time. On her second run, Paige had game. A time of one minute and 57 seconds was good enough for second place. It was awesome, it was fun. I just gave it all I had and do the best I could do. She wasn't the only teenager out here schooling the elders. Hi, I'm Brandon Prater and I'm 15 years old. In a class where the rigs are more powerful and the course is tougher, Brandon holds his own in the big tire division. Hold it wide open, point it where we think it needs to be and hope for the best. With his father riding shotgun, he can see a natural behind the wheel. He knows what he's doing. Just leave him alone, let him drive. For the seat time he's got, he does a real good job. Finishing a respectable six, Dad wasn't disappointed. Pretty good day, we didn't tire nothing up. Had a good time, seen a lot of good friends. Pretty nice. Anything short of victory doesn't cut it for Brandon. I guess we'll do some more to the buggy. We'll be back. Now we've been to a lot of events and a lot of trail rides and have captured some awesome footage, including this rollover right here. This is Jason Randolph in his custom Jeep and a wild ride down the hill. But what's more impressive here is this guy right there. That's Matt Everett, one of our key cameramen. Now Matt, you were there for that shot and this is his view from right here coming at you. Boom! Matt, what'd that feel like, man? Uh, well, it all happened pretty quick, but at first I thought, oh no, I'm going to die, and then it got on up there, and once it started going backwards, I felt like, well, thank goodness, I'm, I'm going to be okay today. But um, for about a second there, I was a little nervous, but it, it came and went pretty quickly. Now, how close did he really come to you? It, it felt like this, but it was probably seven or eight feet, something like that. I didn't intend for, uh, you know, I didn't come to him, he came to me, so to speak. So for the rest of the day, I stood back maybe um, another 10 feet, I think. It's a great shot, man. Thank you. I just happened to be there. <laughs>
Now there is an aftermarket kit that'll flip this case upside down and turn it into that other drop setup. But there's a better system now and it comes from stack 4x4. It basically moves the output on the 300 from the passenger side over to the driver and then changes all the internals inside to work as a driver side drop case. This allows you to run your case in the correct orientation, gears aren't running upside down and it's just as strong if not stronger than the original 300. You may have noticed us talk about the input spline counts on all these transfer cases, but not the transmissions they fit behind. Well, that's because any of these cases can fit behind almost any transmission, import or domestic, thanks to companies like Advanced Adapters that make the adapter kits, the new output shafts for the transmission, and even the speed sensor rings. Welcome back to Extreme 4x4 and our Transfer Case 101 show. Now obviously we couldn't leave here today without looking at one of the most popular small truck transfer cases out there, the Toyota All Gear Drive Transfer Case. Used up until about 1995, it's similar to the new Process 203 and that has a separate range box portion on the front that allows it to get that 2.28 to 1 low range. Now because it has that separate range box, it's popular for a dual case or doubler setup. Using an adapter like this one from Advanced Adapters, the range box bolts onto the front and then a second Toyota stock case can bolt onto the rear. Now the aftermarket has a whole host of products for the Toyota case. Everything from heavy duty housings, low range gears, twin sticks that bolt right in place of the stock setup like these ones from Front Range Off-Road. But the downfall of the Toyota case has always been the fact that you could never disconnect the rear output to do a front dig until now. The guys at Trail Tough Products have just come out with a rear axle disconnect specifically for the back of a Toyota case. It will replace the output flange and allows you to disconnect the rear drive, put the front output in low, and do those front digs that we all love to do. One of the fastest growing items we see nowadays are the aftermarket transfer cases. And the Stack 4x4 case is one of the newest case assemblies. The big news when it hit the trails was its three speed options with a high, a mid, and a low range. Now the case itself is made out of 356 T6 thick walled aluminum and the helical cut gears are heavy duty units with 32 spline front and rear outputs. Now the original crate transfer case is the Atlas II from Advanced Adapters, weighing 110 pounds with large helical cut gears riding on huge taper roller bearings. It's available in almost any spline count and obviously either passenger or driver side drop. Now the Atlas II is a staple in professional rock crawling and rock racing teams. And the most recent change has been Advanced has just released a four speed version of this transfer case with ratios from two to one all the way up to 10 to one. If a four-speed transfer case sounds good to you, this black box from Northwest Fab is a really cool option. It's a planetary reduction housing that fits between almost any transmission and transfer case and helps you achieve two more levels of reduction thanks to this 2.72 to 1 planetary gear set. And that's all we have for you for Transfer Case 101. Be sure to stay tuned as all of these cases eventually find homes in our projects right here on Extreme 4x4. Yeah.